Hello, wonderful people of God. So we come your way this month with exciting news from the camp of our man of God, Dr. Abel Damina, as he shares insights with us on the knowledge of the scriptures concerning the character of God in salvation. So we want you to stay glued to your screen as we broadcast this every day and do the work of an evangelist for us by sharing this message always. Also, like this message and then comment whatever you learn in the comment section. Thank you. And if you're new here, please don't leave without hitting on that subscribe button and that notification bell. Thank you. So Jesus told them all he said, which means that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So the father offered the son for sins. All of us, we were captives of sin. His life now became the spirit in you today. God has never been angry with anybody. If you observe all we have looked, we've not seen the anger of God. He has never punished anyone and he will never punish. Let me repeat. God has never punished anyone and he will never punish. That's why people can confidently say God punish you. Because they know he will not punish them. I remember when I was younger, every time I sin, I would tell God I'm sorry. The next time I do it, let thunder strike me. And thunder never struck me. God is merciful. If God were to be the way you imagine him to be, nobody will be alive today. David said, if you should count iniquities, who can stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. That's not an angry person. <laughs> That's not an angry person. So God's character is consistent. He never punished anybody. Does it mean that people will not be punished? I didn't say that. But I said God never punishes anybody. Did you get that? Did you say that people will not be punished? I didn't say that. But I said God never punishes anybody. He is still the same, consistent, and all his ways are just. He has never changed, even though our perception of him has changed over time due to wrong teachings in the church. But James tells us, Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. It cometh from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. He is always giving and giving. God has never taken from anybody. He has never asked for anything from anybody. Everything we wanted, he gave and he gave and he is still giving today. So question, sin demanded death. God gave it. Sin demanded death. God supplied that death in his son. Sin demanded a man. God became a man. Sin demanded a man. God never asked a man to do it. God himself became a man. Sin demanded death. God didn't kill somebody. God himself died the death and supplied. Sin demanded the man to be tested by temptation. And God gave himself to be tempted in all ways, yet without sin. Sin demanded death and used his captives to kill him. And God allowed the captives to kill him on the cross. Sin demanded his blood. He gave it. But sin's limit, the limit of sin is death. The death of Christ put an end to the plague of sin on humanity. God has gone beyond death. And in death he rose. Today, beyond death is the life of God. And the moment you believe the gospel, you pass from death to life. I thought somebody would shout glory in this house. So God raised Jesus from the dead and sealed our hearts forever with his spirit. So today and forever, we have life. Today and forever, we have life. God has never been angry and God will never be angry. We've been looking for the wrath of God and we are yet to find and we have traveled quite some kilometers through the pages of the scriptures. 
Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Read for me, PJ. Romans chapter 5 verse number 8. Glory to God. Mm -mm. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the death of Jesus is the expression of the love of God. God becoming a man is the expression of how much God loves man. So the redemptive sacrifice is the expression of God's love towards men. But God commended his, his, his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 8 31 he that spared not his son but gave him up for us all how shall he not also with him give us all things freely away with the bipolar image of God away with the bipolar image of God God is not good and bad God is only good and good God is not darkness and light God is only light and light God is not the killer and the maker alive God is only the life giver. I am come that you may have life and be abundant. I feel like I'm teaching good this evening. So away with the bipolar image of God. God is consistently good. The same yesterday good. The same today good. Will be the same forever good. That's what the Bible teaches. This is not Abel Damina trying to make God look good. Can I even make God look good? This is what the Bible teaches. If I saw otherwise, I will teach you. I have nothing at stake. I'm not the writer. I'm not the message. My job is to interpret and show you exactly what it is. I was not there when it was written. But by the grace of God, I know how to interpret what they wrote. I don't have to make God look good if he's not good. He's the ancient of days. He's the almighty. He can be whatever he wants to be. But he has shown us what he is in his word. And we must stay with the fidelity of scriptures. Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor say, my God is a good God. And he remains forever good. He remains eternally good. Now tell your neighbor, there is no bad in God. Tell your neighbor, God is totally good. Tell your neighbor, God is forever good. Glory to God. And tell your neighbor, if you doubt the goodness of God, just take a good look at me. I am a product of his goodness. And his nature in me. Look at the character of God. It is called the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, long-suffering, temperance. That is the character of God. Glory to God. If God were to be an angry God, there would be anger in the fruit of the Spirit. If God were to be a killer God, there would be killing the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit reveals the character of God. That is the Spirit of God who is God himself. And those are, that's the manifestation, the expressions of the character of the Spirit called God. Love, joy, peace gentleness meekness long suffering goodness kindness that's the character of god away with the bipolar image of god he doesn't demand he only supplies he doesn't take he only gives even when you misbehave and the repercussion comes he steps in in mercy to still help what a good god altogether lovely Altogether gracious, altogether beautiful. Glory to God. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.